Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Make sure we're rolling here. All right. Um, hi, everybody. My name is uh, Kabir Segel. It's great to be um, here on our nightly series, the Quarantine Concert Series. Um, you know, we started the series for a very specific purpose because right now we're going through an, a national emergency. We're practicing social distancing and almost all gigs and concerts have been canceled. And a lot of people who rely on gigs and concerts and events, um, their way of life has really been altered um, for the foreseeable future. And it's not just the artists, it's the producers and the bookers and the promotion. Everyone who's part of the entertainment industry on live events is being impacted. So um, we started this series to make sure that the, the music uh, continues and uh, that artists, talented artists can spread their um, music with the world. Um, a few kind of notes, if you want to get on the broadcast, just like hit me up on, on Instagram or Facebook, um, let me know. And um, I also wanted to just say um, thanks to all the artists who've participated and taken, taken a leap so far. There's been a lot of great uh, support and, and love and, um, if, uh, if you have any questions or comments, um, please, you can just drop a comment in the, um, you can drop a comment in the, um, uh, down in the comments. We love to respond and we're very excited to, to start this, um, this edition of the Quarantine Concert Series. So before we begin, I just want to say that tonight we have a very special uh, guest. Uh, Matt Mayer is uh, a talented uh, pianist. He is a, a, just a conceptual art artist. I think he is a great innovator. And he and I hit it off from like day number one. And what I like about Matt is that he wears many hats. Um, and we'll talk about that. But because he wears many hats today, I'm going to wear my hat, right? <laughs> my Atlanta Braves hat. And I want to I wanna just, Matt, How's it going, my man in Omaha? How's it going? Kabir, how you doing? That's a that's a good looking hat, man. You look good <laughs> in that Atlanta Braves hat. Great to be Thank with you. you. Yeah, likewise, likewise. Um, well, look, tell me um, for every people who don't know you, tell me um, a little bit about your artistic career before you start your first song. Tell me about your artistic career and how you got started as an artist. Yeah, thank you so much. First, before I do that, um, honestly, man, I just want to say thank you to you what you're doing. Um, supporting, um, you, you continue to support so many artists, the industry. And, uh, like you said, man, it, it's, uh, it's, it's a privilege to call you a friend. So thanks for the invitation to be a part of this awesome quarantine concert series. What a great idea. Um, honored to be here. Um, yeah. So, uh, my name is Matthew Mayer. I'm, I'm, uh, born and, uh, raised in South Dakota. Yes. Dakota. You can probably hear it. Dakota. Um, town of, uh, but I do, I do tell people I, I was smart, um, graduated third out of my class. I just don't tell people I only had 13 in my class. So, um, so, uh, come from, uh, so all, all huge shout out to everyone, um, from, from Canastota, South Dakota that may be listening and everybody in South Dakota, but, uh, started, started lessons, um, at 12 years old, um, by a man named, by the name of Art Cooper and, um, and really grew up, uh, took a liking to, to composition, um, started writing in, in, in uh, junior high and then into high school. And then um, after that, um, in college is when I released my first album, Crossing the Bridge. Shout out to all the uh, University of South Dakota Coyotes out there that may be tuning in and uh, listening. Go Yotes. Uh, no offense, Andrea. I know you're at South Dakota uh, State, but that's right. Bunnies are okay. They're welcome here, too. Anyway, um, so... After that, um, spent a couple years out in uh, Los Angeles because that is the place that you move to after you've lived in South Dakota all your life. The next logical step is you move to L.A. And uh, lived out of there for a couple years. And then um, through that time have been um, releasing, um, releasing albums along the way, um, trying to. It's all solo piano music, more usually put into the contemporary instrumental style that is trying to um, really stress um, journeys in our life and trying to connect people through, uh, through the piano itself. Awesome, man. So thanks for the introduction. What are you going to uh, begin, um, our Friday night, uh, late night session with? What are you going to yeah, begin yeah. The, the session with? I'll, uh, I'm going to start off with a song called, uh, this, this is a song called beyond, 
Um, it was one uh, that I wrote um, living out in uh, California. And this is really about when I think about the times that we're in right now, when I think about um, what we're all being asked to do, sometimes we've got to stretch ourselves beyond um, that which we think we can. And so that's what the, that's when this song um, was born. And um, it's really about stretching outside your uh, what you think your own capabilities are. So I hope you like it. It's called Beyond. I mean, thank you. All I gotta say, all I gotta say. <laughs> I mean, that's that's the good, Matt. That's the good news. That's I mean, ten, ten. Bad news is bad news is out of eleven. But uh, <laughs> well, yeah, I, I'm I'm glad you gave me a ten. It looked like you gave me a one there. So it looks like I, had, it looked like I still had a lot more to go. But that's good. Yeah. That's right. I've got some I've got some sheets too that I can, you know. I we need another vote. All right. Well, well, here's the good news with that, Kabir, is we can uh, we can only go up from here. Okay, <laughs> we can only go up from here. 
So yeah, I hear you. Uh, hey man, that, that was that really was beautiful. Oh, talk thanks. to me. T- talk to me about your composition process uh, because you're playing one instrument. How yeah. do you think of it in terms of structuring the song? Is it because you know when you do songwriting, it's like verse, chorus, refrain. What is the structure of a piano, um, a solo piano piece? That is a great question. Like the um, the typical structure, you know, when when you studied it, and I studied a little bit of um, the- music theory in college, is you you typically have your A B A structure, you have your A B C B A structure, and um, and really. Um, the benefit of that, when you kind of understand that, is that it provides there is a structure to music and there is a structure to songs. And there, the ear, in a lot of cases, likes familiar, familiarity. So um, in a lot of solo piano pieces, you know, you still are going to find yourself, um, fil- you know, going going through that A, B, C, B, A structure in a lot of cases, just like they did, just like the classical players did, you know, centuries and centuries ago. Um, I think the challenge becomes, especially, and and Kabir, you and I have talked about this all the time. Um, you know, I have a, I have such a tremendous respect um, for jazz and the jazz musicians out there. Um, I know you have a lot of um, friends, and I know you, you you're very successful um, instrumentalist jazz as well. And um, you know, when when you what you try to do is especially um, in my art form, is I'm trying to connect. I'm trying to connect with that listener. And in some cases, it depends on, on who, your, who your target is. Um, but I really try to let my emotion drive it more than I let structure drive it. So even though in the back to your, to your original question, the ABA, that's always there. You, you say, okay, this is a great 16, 16 measure passage, or this is a great eight me- measure passage. And you can repeat that and you can do it again. Um, but really it's, it's okay. What, it, what emotion is driving that? What is, what is, um, what is it? Can this song, um, I heard from a, from a really um, established artist once say, can the song take on a life of its own? And if you can feel that as an artist, then there's a better chance for that listener to feel that. So um, the thing, the thing when you're as as you know when you're an instrumentalist and you're playing just solo piano, um, you're you know you're <laughs> you're naked out there. There's nothing you could. I mean, y- you just all you have is your the feeling you have and the instrument that you have, and you just hope that um, you just hope that you can connect with the audience and and that they're gonna f- hopefully feel what you're trying to portray. So. Totally, totally. I do want to read some um, some comments here. Uh, Jody Wayland says, Jody you, sound ama- you sound amazing listening with some wine in hand. So uh, cheers. Cheers, Jody. Jody, cheers, Jody, I hope Todd's also watching. I don't know if you're drinking red or, red or wi- white, but I'm having a Coke and some water. Um, I'm having a, some orange La Croix. Uh, <laughs> Thank you for joining Jody from Sioux Falls, South Dakota. We got Derek Amato. Oh and yeah, Derek is a, a phenomenal piano player. You bet. Andrea Johnson. Andrea. Daria, John- <laughs> Daria Federich Murphy. Yes. Um, I also want to say uh, a special shout out to Camilo and, and Sandra oh. on the back end for providing all the technical, and I would also say emotional support of getting through what has exploded into 15 screens here. I feel like I'm trading back at, at, <laughs> in investment banking, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, so, um, hey man, what do you, I, I do want to keep the, keep the music going. Yeah, and yeah. And you sound, you sound so beautiful. So what are you going to play for us next? Well, I really, um, I wanted to do something different I usually don't do. And again, it's in the spirit of the concerts that you're doing here, which again, thank you so much. This is, it's so much fun, but especially during this time, I, I talked about where I came from, and I came from a, a place, a small town in Canastota, to South Dakota, and I got my start by playing these. I would play these summer concerts every Wednesday for an hour um, in the waiting room of a, of what was called and is called the Ortman Clinic. It's a very popular chiropractic clinic in South Dakota. And I was just talking to one of, one of the 13 in my class, <laughs> uh, Dr. Nate Leitenberg, who's uh, a doctor at the Ortman Clinic, um, but you know they're really a small business, and their small businesses right now are are also you know taking a hit during this time. And so what I thought I would do is is go back to the roots, and you know as we come out the other end of this, um, if anyone needs a chiropractic adjustment, I, I want you to go to just they come from all over the world. I want you to go to Canastota, South Dakota, go to the Orman Clinic, support them. 
Um, but this is to all the patients that I used to play for. Um, and I'm just going to take it back and just play a little medley of some familiar, really older songs that my piano teacher um, started me out with. And I think they're ones that you'll find familiar, but they'll go back to the 20s, 30s, and 40s. And uh, hopefully um, those listening of, of all ages can, uh, can connect with some of these. So th this is where I started and, and uh, who I started to play for as an audience. So I hope you'll, hope you'll find some of these familiar. Thank you. It's been a while since I broke some of those tunes out. Okay, one. Hold on. What do we got here? Point, <laughs> one, ten point one. Oh, 10.1. Great. Great. Going up, We're, man. God, this is great. And you got a new hat. Well, that's, <laughs> that's, that's what I wanted to go into because hold on. You, are, you are a man who uh, wears many hats. So, ah. I didn't know you were going to play that game. <laughs> I um, didn't know you were gonna play this game. We're gonna see who has many hat, as many hats. Gosh, I should have been ready for this. See, look at that backup. You're fully one on stocked. me. I'm fully stocked. <laughs> tell, tell me, tell Gosh. me about um, what you. Look around. Tell me about solo piano, man. What is solo piano? Oh yeah. Um. So solo solo piano solo piano dot com. Actually, um, this was a site that I started back. It was actually 20 years ago, almost to the month. Um. It was uh, this idea where I, I originally bought it with the idea of saying um, I had just released uh, my first solo piano album in 1999. And, you know, in those days, it was just um, in those days. Whoa, hold on here. Can you hear me better there? No, you can hear me better there. There we go. In those days, um, 
you know, the internet was just happening. There was no Google. There was there was nothing. And so I bought this domain name with the idea to um, <clears throat> really support my own album. And then I really give a lot of credit to uh, a good friend of mine, and his name is Joe Bartman, who lives in Montrose, um, South Dakota. He also has done um, j just just a phenomenal guy. We were roommates. He did a lot of work um, in Main Street, Sioux Falls, and he's done a lot of uh, really small town community um, development, and has really helped a lot of uh, a lot of South Dakota. Um, communities organizations and he we were having uh i believe it was hot chocolate at the time way back no, i'm kidding see i'm just gonna go off the story but <laughs> I'm, I'm just yeah. gonna go off now no, so, I want, so, I want to hear it. so uh we're, we're we're sitting there having hot chocolate and i remember him saying i remember him saying to me he goes matt why why are you just thinking about your own album why aren't you thinking about like all solo piano albums i'm like whoa okay and that was really the start of um so I'd reach out to um, people that, you know, there was uh, very few people. <laughs> the solo piano market in southeastern South Dakota in 1999 is not necessarily thriving. Um, but you start to develop these relationships. And right now, today, 20 years later, we've got um, over 400 artists from around the world that um, they can build. So if you're an artist, and, and really, I'm, I'm so glad you brought this up. So to all of your, especially all of your um jazz piano artist friends as well um, you can build a free page here you can build a free solo piano page um, you you can classify your genre so if you're jazz um, you can be in jazz we've got classical we've got holiday and you can go there you can click join and um, we'll look it over and then we'll approve it and then we have um, we do different little marketing packages as you can see Ido Sands here um, <clears throat> out of Mexico. We just um, featured him in his album, um, and uh, we link to your uh, Spotify page and all. So it's just another uh, way to uh, to support the solo piano. Yeah, I call it a genre, um, but a, the solo piano world and and artists to um, to uh, have somewhere that they know that that people can say, okay, there's a community of artists out there, and we can we can support them. So. Um, yeah, 400 plus, 20 years, and and uh, you know, uh, it'll be around for another 20 years. So it's it's been a labor of love, I, and uh, I don't want to age myself. I started it when I was five, so <laughs> don't worry about that. But uh, yeah, uh, but anyway, I really, I mean, what I really like about it is you're helping. You're you're not a lot of artists. Um, is it's wonderful. They focus on their art, and you're doing the same thing. You're doing what I what we call in the in the military. We call it force multi force multiplying. You're building a platform for like and, and multiplying the solo, the an army of solo pianists, if you will, to spotlight like them. And you're it's a really a beautiful like uh, thing that you've done. And I really think that um, you're using sort of some business savvy as well. And I want to get that into that into the next segment yep. about th thinking about how we wear multiple hats. Um, because I, I mean, I'm doing this sort of metaphorically, but we, we really do. One thing I really connect with Matt on is being an artist. Uh, with a day job. We're going to talk about how we sort of balance those things. But uh, right now, I want to sort of read some comments. Um, Amy Brown says, I vote for Dream 6, 2. Uh, Nicole Gessel uh, Wachalachitz. What a lot of it. Encore. Nicole uh, has joined. That's yeah. great. And Amy, John, Amy Brown. John Hargis says, Enjoying this with a glass of whiskey. Good stuff, Matt. <laughs> um, Matt Lavender says, Or touch would, uh, would be lovely. Um, mm -hmm. touch, touch, Matt Lavender says touch would be lovely. Um, you sound amazing. Cause says Angie, um, Michael Mayer says, I've heard a few of these songs. A that's, few times. that's, that's my brother. And you met him last month. You met Mike on the old, uh, red carpet. So yeah, 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 yeah. I remember. Um, and also in the restroom, I think, right. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the best. Story. I hope I can, can I tell that story. Well, I, I mean, oh, I mean, if you want. Yes, I want to tell the story. This is a great story. So, um, so all my friends and, and everyone joining. Thank you so much again. This is this is so much fun. So my friend here on the other on the other end is a very humble guy. I mean, um, he's one of our favorite <laughs> artists. He's got a bucket of my my son. This is his favorite book. Um, it's called The Bucket of Blessings. New York Times bestseller. Um, anyway, uh, just. 
Uh, Kabir's accomplished so much. Well, earlier that day, so we were out at the Grammys, and there's two shows to the Grammys. There's the premiere ceremony, and then there's the real cer- not the real, I should say that, the, the, um, the one that you see on TV. Anyway, um, it was so funny because Kabir um, had won uh, an, an award, uh, won a Grammy earlier in the day, and uh, we were cheering for him, and, and it's so busy, so you don't know if you're going to see each other. And then my brother Mike and I, you know, we went to the restroom, and we turned around, and Kabir was there with two paper towels, just ready to just ready to hand it to him. I'm like, that's, I mean, come on, who wins a Grammy, and then is right there for you to just, you know, help you wash <laughs> well, your hands. So you I, look like you look like you're in need. And I do want to say, this predated the current outbreak. I was pro hand wa- <laughs> pro hand washing. Did right. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking about getting your hands busy. Yeah. How about we hear, how about we hear some more music? You got it. You got it. Um, I'm going to I'm going to just do a nice little light piece here um, uh, because we've been at home a lot. And, and at night I wrote this song. It's called Stars on One, Two, Three. And it's just a really nice uh, j- j- just a really nice light melody. Those having wine, please top your wine off and just kind of relax. Catch your exhale. And it's called Stars on One, Two, Three. I live on 123rd Street and have three kids. And at night, this is what this song was written for. Dude, very, very touching, Thank you. very poignant, very emotional. Um, talk to me about how you use silence mm-hmm. in your pieces. That's a great question. Um, I would say that that came with maturity for me. And I, you know me, I'm not a very mature person anyway. So um, it took me uh, it took me a long time to really um, to really understand that silence is actually uh, a huge ingredient, a very, very huge ingredient to, to music. Silence is music. And um, <clears throat> it's actually kind of taken me to the later part of um, uh, the creative process for me. And as I've, as, as I've gotten older is to really embrace um, silence more. And it's hard to do, right? It's hard to do in this world where it's noise. It's noise, noise, noise. It's 
how many things can we do how, how quick can we go and so to be patient and then to to exhale a little bit um that's kind of been the challenge for me and so um you know I, it's it's funny because when you play for i mean there's so many amazing amazing talented artists out there and you can get in your mind that something might be simple but then if you're really trying to if you're really trying to go for that emotion it it actually challenges you so much to say okay you've you can play a simple song but to play it in a way like that's that's the muscle that i've been trying to flex more is how do i embrace silence and how do i how do i make sure i'm portraying that in a song um that i can portray that there's stars shining down that i can portray that um that we are uh um to to kind of fit that that feel so um so yeah I, I love that question it's it's uh silence is is an integral part of music and should be embraced yeah i hear you oh, um man. so i you know i want to just to switch gears a little bit and talk about um how you balance you and i both wear multiple hats as everyone can see how yeah. do you balance having a day job with your musical career because there often can be a stigma um, on both sides, a stigma that if you are an artist, you should sort of commit 100% to being an artist. Um, and if you're working a day job, it's like, oh, wait a second, like you should be focused 100% on your day job. So how do you um, balance the two and how do you get over the stigma of having two careers? The, there's definitely a stigma. And, and the funny thing, um, the funny thing when you say there's a stigma, there's a stigma on both sides. Right. And I've hit I've hit both of those stigmas. So at 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 your quote unquote day job, um, which I feel very fortunate to have. And I'm so I'm so grateful to have the day job that I do. Um, you know, some people might say, well, wh what are you doing working here? And and on the other side of it, you 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 can be in the a musician circle. And um, sometimes the question will come to you. Well, are you doing this full time or do you have another job? And if you have a quote unquote another job, there's the stigma of, well, you must not really be a real musician or, or, or you, you know, there, there's something, you know, if you were a real musician, you'd be, you know, if you're really a professional, you'd be doing this full time. And, and I, what, what I loved, and, and you wrote a, you wrote an awesome article on this in the Harvard business review about why it's actually good to have both. And, for those out there that have both and for those out there that are struggling with those stigmas and, and balancing them, my advice is be confident in where you're at and there's a reason. And I think you're starting to see it more and more where it is a really good thing. Doing one thing can actually help you in the other. Um, I have found that, um, I, well, I just shared with you, you know, in, in my, in what I do in my quote unquote day job, you know, they've been very supportive of, um, you know, this week they just shared a, a playlist, you know, and um, you, you start to see overlaps in so many different areas that you didn't think really existed. And then um, what I have learned in my day job, I have translated so much of that as an artist. I've translated so much of that. And how do you communicate with people? Um, you know, I've, I've done I, I work a lot in, in human resources. And so you can imagine there are um, there are a lot of conversations that require you to know how to navigate and, and how do you get along and how do you build those relationships? Well, as you know, Kabir, better than anybody, this this is the music industry is all about relationships and it's all about building friendships. And it's but I mean, it, you know, there's a lot of people, you know, that that can play instruments. But it, but it, but if. If you're not able to really articulate, and it's, it, again, I'm still working on it myself, is how do you articulate who you are as a person? How do you articulate your your genre? How do you connect with people that is just beyond, you know, the music? Um, and I've always, I've always wondered, I always thought it was interesting that isn't it funny how some of the people that are accomplishing the most um, that I look, that I look to, they're doing so many other things that you would think, oh my gosh, I can't believe they're doing that, or I can't believe they also do that, or I can't believe they also do that. So um, it's taken me a long time um, to get here, but um, and I love your newsletter that you have on, on LinkedIn that's dedicated to this topic. Um, but I would say be confident in where you're at. You know, you're going to feel lonely sometimes. You're going to feel like you're you're you might be a fish out of water, but be confident with where you're at and and to know that uh, 
Um, yeah, <laughs> he's, got, and he's, you know, I've, I am so upset with myself that I only have two hats available. I mean, this is really something. I should. Hey, have well, by the way, while you're, while you're um, up there looking, we have some comments on uh, Instagram that they can't hear your, can't hear any audio on your Instagram. I don't know if you muted something on Instagram or. Oh. We probably don't want to uh, touch it to mess anything up, but just an yes. FYI, Camila, okay. if you're listening in, um, what's up there? I don't know if there's some kind of microphone setting you hit. Um, by the way, if you're watching on Instagram, head over to my Facebook page. You can see the link in the bio Absolutely. and you'll get the full, you'll get the full audio. Uh, this is the first time we're doing IGTV and, uh, you know, it's sort of a work in progress. We started the series just three days ago and now I have 15 screens in front of me. <laughs> and, uh, and so just a few, um, a few comments. So first of all, um, Amy Palma says you are such a great person, heart, Amy. um, Shane Abudo, what's up? Welcome from Beverly Hills, I appreciate it. Uh, Darcy Anderson, hi Matt. Sharon Walling, beautiful. Carrie Mitzel, you're, you are an amazing friend. Carrie. Um, Nicole says, let's be honest, he eats just peanuts um, and M&M at his day job. Um, <laughs> you know, I do, I work with Nicole. I eat a lot of peanut and M&Ms, I do. Yeah, that's I good. Um, Sharon says, uh, thanks, topped off my Cabernet. Yes. And uh, Amber Brown says, tuning in while I'm working from home. Uh, hey, that's what it's all about. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully this gives you some, some good music some, and some conversation while we're home. I also do want to say hi to John Finberry. John Finberry is an awesome, awesome um, this composer and uh, Grammy and Latin Grammy nominated songwriter. So, and he's a great admirer of, uh, of solo piano work. And so uh, thanks for joining us, John. Uh, what are you going to play for us next? Yeah, I'm going to play a... Uh... I'm going to play a song here from uh, the melody I wrote uh, when I was 17, but it's one that um, one that I played all my concert, and it's called Dreams. And I hope that uh, everyone that, uh, as your home, uh, Cabernet, water, sparkling, whatever you're, whatever you're beveraging, um, I hope that you, during this time, you take some time um, to think about those dreams that you have. And that's what this song is all about, is uh, capturing that spirit of having a dream, going for it, and uh, and this is also I think Amy made a comment about Dream Six. This is the first dreams of uh, of that series that started it all off. So this is called Dreams.
Thank you. Hold it, hold it. I just want to say that's my favorite piece so far. Thank you. I Thank don't know. You. Something about um, something about how you play and even the your your touch, which is of course the name of your single. Um, it's it's you're sort of channeling your spirit, and these pieces are almost like personal meditations. Um, and so many people can sort of like listen to it, and it evokes. Uh, I think anyone can listen to this music, and they can it can still their mind. It can find help find tranquility. But what a special gift, Matt, that you can give everyone in a time of sort of national and international turbulence. For those you know few minutes, I was focused just on those notes. I wasn't thinking about what was going on outside. You know, even though it looks pretty nice out here. Um, <laughs> no, but but I mean it. Um, and I just want to want to you know thank you so much for for um, for sharing that with us. Um, I do want to. Um, mention a few comments here. Uh, Carrie Mitzel says, so incredible. Um, and then, uh, Michael Mayer says, maybe I should start talk, start taking piano lessons during his time off. Um, Amy Palma, amazing work. Fido, hey Fido, what's up? So yeah, Fido was our uh, incredible uh, sound engineer in Mexico City that helped uh, with the Fandango at the wall mix. I was gonna say, was that the Fandango on the wall? That was awesome. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, Sam Jeff Jafarian writes, "Hey, great Matt, what's the story behind behind the Beyond piece? What's the story behind it?" Yeah, um, great question. Um, the story behind that was uh, really out of um, kind of loneliness. I, I've always uh, I've always written from a bittersweet spot. You know, the the beauty and the uh, the pain that we can feel emotionally. I've I've tried to mix them together. That song was literally um, came from a small town kid moving to Los Angeles. And for two years, I lived out, um, for two years, I lived out in LA. I, I worked at, uh, <clears throat> NBC's access Hollywood television show started as an intern and then worked there for two years. And with that move, <clears throat> you know, there's, there's a lot of blessings that come from when you grow up in a small town and you have tremendous support and you have tremendous, um, you just have, you know, the whole community is, is really supporting you and they want to see you. And then you move to a big city, um, <clears throat> especially for two years. It, it was, there was bouts of loneliness in that. And <clears throat> anytime we all feel that, and there's probably a lot of us feeling that even right now, as we're somewhat isolated, it's just strange times. It's, it came from being able to look at that loneliness in the face and then writing it and then, and then expressing it and saying, okay, what am I really feeling here? And, and, um, testing our inner strength a lot. And that's where beyond came from is, is going beyond what you think you can do really looking into your soul and saying, okay. Um, I mean, I, I was in a studio apartment studio paying $900 a month, uh, in rent, um, and, uh, in Burbank, California, and um that song came out of that apartment and um i just um that melody came out one day and uh that is a direct correlation to um to to kind of to kind of facing that loneliness in the face it you know get, getting up to the nose of that and then expressing it and so um those songs and and you can see on the screen a new day is another song that was written out all from my beyond CD. Um, but nonetheless, again, it's, it's the message of it's okay to feel those things that are making us uncomfortable. And if we look at it, there's beautiful things. There's beautiful things that we can create out of that. Um, and that's what I try to do as an artist. So, um, thank you for that question. That was a great, that was a really, really great question. Love that question. Yeah. Uh, just for those of you who are players and performers, um, Matt has merchandise on his website, mattmary.com. Um, you see some of those pieces, A New Day, uh, The Unknown. Um, there's also, it, what didn't make the cut was um, was Jingle Bells, which yeah. is all there. Yeah, uh, that's, that's a... Matt, by the way, I think your phone, your IGTV stopped. Oh, so, oh um, okay. Okay. So My you want to get that going again and, and invite me back. We'll get the IGCV going. Okay. Sorry, I gr Instagram. My IG is here. Let me let me get you back up here. We've got we've got screens going. Um, we've got uh, 
Okay, let me let me get us back going here. Thank you for your. Oh, also, uh, Michael Lavender says, "Can you play No Regrets?" I don't know if you prepared that. Oh, oh my gosh, Michael, you're really stretching me there. Um, who? I I didn't prepare that one tonight, Michael. I I I know I could probably get most of it out, but you're really. Uh, We'll do. We'll do. A, that'll be in the. Uh, that'll be in the encore performance. That'll be encore. I promise. I'm gonna write that down. Um, yes, I do like that song. Actually, it just. It, there's a. There's some really intricacies that I've got. I haven't touched that for a long time. That I've got to work on. So. Yeah. I think we're speaking, back live on Instagram. Speaking of great, you know, solo performers, Heidi Breyer just joined us. Oh, Heidi's amazing. She's amazing. She's. Yeah. Uh, um. Her last great, album was phenomenal. Heidi, thanks for joining us. Um. Yes, everyone check out Heidi on Spotify as well, Heidi Breyer. Um, Brian Keating says, Kabir, I have a fun story. My girlfriend and I went to listen to Matt perform on our first date. We went to talk to him after the performance only to find out he's actually my neighbor. What a <laughs> guy. Dude, you're a, you're a celebrity. I'm not a celebrity. You um, are. I'm not, I'm not. I you give me way too many props. Um, I'm talking just so everyone really knows. No, no. I, we, we have to we have to move on to the next piece. So, um, what is the next piece going to be? <laughs> he's he's dodging it. Host part. Kabir's host in Brian. New York. Kabir's in New York. I'm in Omaha. No, I'm I'm in ATL today. Actually, oh, everyone, I'm coming live. I should have said this in the intro. I'm coming live from my parents' um, dining room table. Nice. Um, parents are upstairs snoozing. And we're having a party in the dining room. I love it. Everyone's invited. So welcome. Yes. I love it. Cheers. All right. What do you play? What's the, this is the last piece, right? This is the last piece here. And I just thought I would um, end with a uh, couple variations of um, two pretty familiar songs, I think, since you were a kid, um, inspired off my art album. And uh, just something to leave you with. Uh, um as uh, the night, you know, as the night sets on us, um, I hope you, maybe you're on your third glass of wine right now, and that is totally okay. So I hope if you got that feeling going, um, but just, just hopefully you get taken away with a little bit of these variations of some childhood favorites.
Thank you. <laughs> You had to take a bow, man. Take a bow. All right, man. I've got my workout pants on too. So, got my. Thank you. <laughs> he's got. You see, and then he pulls the Mickey Mouse ears on me. That's just. He's got a flex like that. In the end, you got me there. I'm just, you know. That's uh, actually perfect flavor for this last thing too. I know. That's perfect. I felt, I felt it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so. I just want to, um, you know, thank you. A few, just a few final comments here. Now, I want to read um, Heidi Breyer. How can I join? Heidi, send me a note. Try to get you on the show. Awesome. Uh, Matthew sounds awesome. Yes, he does. Um, Kay Watanabe says, "So beautiful, Matt. Thank you for sharing your gifts tonight." Thank you, Kay. Sharon Leah, I know Sharon. She's awesome. She, oh yeah, Sharon Leah. Yeah. She's joining. Sharon's Rondi said you're welcome to come over to her and play them um, play piano for her anytime. She's awesome. A, so maybe yeah. we could do a pairing. Um, so look guys, um, I want to thank Matt for, for joining, um, this very special broadcast. Uh, we're coming to you live every night at 10 PM Eastern. Um, I wanted to feature Matt because Matt wears multiple hats. And so we've been changing hats. He balances, you know, um, being uh, running a couple websites. He's a solo musician. He spreads his gifts with the world. Um, so thank you, Matt, so much for being on the broadcast tonight. Um, I want to do a, a hat tip to Camilo and Sandra for helping on the tech support uh, on the back end. And I also want to um, say that tomorrow uh, is a double header. Double header. We have a matinee showing at, at 3 p.m. Yes. My man, Manuel Valera, he's awesome. an incredible Cuban pianist, um, jazz pianist. And um, we have in the evening Mehmet Ali Salnikol, who's a professor, who's a professor at the um, at the Manhattan, excuse me, New England Conservatory. Matt, before we before we um, head out, where can people where can people find you online? Yeah, um, thanks thanks so, so much. And again, um, just thank you, Kabir, for for everything that you're doing. Um, you're supporting so many artists, and just like I said, it's it's an honor to to know you and to be invited. Um, yeah, just yeah, MatthewMayor.com or just um, please, if you have Spotify or Pandora, I would be so grateful if you, uh, um, you know, added me on Spotify or Pandora or Amazon Music. Um, those streams matter. Um, and uh, so, yeah, just search Matthew Mayer and, and, and reach out to me. Reach out to me on um, at Mayer Solo Piano is my is my handle for Twitter, for Instagram, for Facebook. Um, it's at Mayer Solo Piano. Um, so please, please connect with me. Um, I would love to hear from you. I'd love to hear where you were listening. And, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm so grateful for all the listeners and, and all that you do, Kabir. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, my brother. And we didn't even talk about, um, my recent, our, our recent meeting in Omaha, which you <laughs> family and I went out to go to Omaha earlier this year, uh, with my family and Matt hosted us, showed us around the town and uh, even drove us into uh, Iowa, Iowa, so, old, old flavor of Iowa. But maybe we could talk about that on uh, the next on the next uh, encore performance of uh, the quarantine concert series. On the matinee, on a matinee yeah, exactly. show, we'll cover that one. Exactly. <laughs> hey, thanks everyone for joining. Uh, over and out. Have a great, great night. Have a great weekend. Hope we see you tomorrow at uh, 3 p.m. Eastern and 10 p.m. Eastern. Have a good night. Thank you, brother. <laughs>